afternoon, we're going to cover 7.3, the mortgage application process. So a little review. This formula is from Unit 3, um, but we are going to be using it again. It's the monthly payment formula. So it's how we would calculate our monthly credit card formula, our monthly mortgage bill, um, those sorts of things. And I'm going to go, I'll quickly review the certain parts. Um, if you'll notice the letters in there, I have M for monthly. I have P, R, and T. So just a little review in case you've forgotten. P is the principal, so principal amount you borrowed usually. R is your rate, and they give that to us in a percent. We have to convert it to a decimal. And then T is the number of years. So we're going to use that formula and go ahead and jump into number one. So the Jacobs family is planning to buy a home. They have some money for a down payment already. They see a home they like and compute that they would need to borrow $213,000 over 30 years and the APR, the annual percentage rate, is 3.75. Let's go ahead and make that a decimal. That would be 0 .0375. What is the monthly payment to the nearest cent? So I'm going to calculate it right here using a calculator. So M equals P, that's the amount we're borrowing. I'm using this formula here. So 213 times our rate over 12 times 1 plus our rate over 12 to the, and then up here would be 12 um, times a 30. And I'm going to go ahead and simplify that so that I can just enter one number. So 12 times 30 gives us 360. So instead of that, I'm just going to write 360. And we're going to divide this amount by, it's, it's this last part repeated. So 1 plus 0 0.0375 divided by 12 to the 360, but minus 1. So I'm going to enter it all at once um, in the top and then all at once on the bottom. So here we go. I have um, 213, oops, one too many zeros, <laughs> times 0 0.0375 divided by 12 times 1 plus 0 0.0375 divided by 12 to the 360. And we are, and if you want, you can record what you get. I got 2046.68. And I'm going to divide that by parentheses, ooh, I'm gonna, whoops, I'm gonna need to do the bottom separate. So parentheses one plus 0 0.0375 divided by 12 to the 360 minus one. So divided by 2.075. So I'm gonna calculate that last part, 2046.68 divided by 2.075, and I end up with 986 and 35 cents. So I'm going to record that for part A. That would be their monthly payment, almost um, $1,000. Hold on, I need to change my notes. And then part B. So part B says, what is the total amount of, um, what is the total of all monthly payments over the 30 years? So if this is their monthly payment, 986 and 35, that's what they're going to pay per month. But they have to do that for a total of 360 months because there are 12 months times 30 years. So that total, 986.35 times 360, they will pay $355,086. It's a lot of money. Um, part B, what is her total, or part C, what is her total interest? So total interest would be the total she's going to pay minus the amount they borrowed. They only borrowed 213. So they will pay over $142,860 in interest. So careful when you are borrowing money. It ends up costing you a lot of money. <laughs> All right, so number two, a bank requires that um, the dot coms pay their home owner's insurance, property taxes, 
and mortgage in one monthly payment. Um, and that's called a compound account. So when you buy a home, you have a compound account and you'll make one payment and it will include your mortgage, your property taxes, and your homeowner's insurance. So it includes everything. So we're going to calculate that portion. So it would be the, first of all though, this says that their property tax bill is semi-annual. That means they receive it twice a year. So I need to know how much it is per month. So I'm dividing it by six because semi-annual means it's only taken twice or every six months. And so when I divide that, I got $539.83. Homeowners, this is annual, so 980 divided by 12 because it said annual. So I'm trying to figure out my monthly cost. So if I divide that by 12, I got 8167. So their total bill would be the mortgage plus their monthly property taxes plus their homeowner's insurance and this would give them their total payment per month and I got a total of $2332.72. That's how much they would pay their bank per month. Okay. Next page. All right, so this is comparing two types of loans, a 25-year loan or a 30-year loan. Now, I am contrary to what you might think. The longer the loan, the more you will pay, whether your interest is more or not. Um, and so that is why when I bought a home, we paid it we took a 15-year mortgage instead of a 30-year mortgage because we were going to pay a lot less in interest. So um, for part A, they'd like us to calculate our monthly payment. So we're going to use that monthly payment formula. So again, in this case, it says you're borrowing. Oh, sorry. So M, my monthly payment, is the amount I'm borrowing. times our rate, which they said is 4%, divided by 12, times 1 plus 0 0.04, divided by 12, to the 12 times 25. Now, um, I'm going to simplify this. Okay, 12 times 25 is 300, so that is what I'm going to use. Um, and then I'm going to divide this by, remember it's this last part repeated, so 1 plus 0 0.04 divided by 12, to the 300th and then minus one. So I'm gonna enter this in my calculator. I like to do top and then bottom. I got 1809.1768 divided by 1.7138. So their monthly payment is 1055.65. Now yours can be off a couple pennies. It's really um, whether you around it or not. Um, and so I'm going to enter that for part A, 1055.65. So what is the total interest paid? Well, they're going to make this payment for 25 years times the uh, 12 months a year minus they're only borrowing 200000 So the interest will be the difference. So 1055.65 times third, whoops, times 12 times 25 minus the amount they are borrowing. They're going to spend um, 11,600 and, wait, sorry, $116,695 in interest. That's a lot of money. It's over 100 grand in interest. All right, what is the monthly payment for the 30 year? So the only part that's going to change in this entire formula is that instead of 12 times 25, I'm going to have 12 times 30. So same amount borrowed, same interest rate. This part is the same. But up here I'm going to have 12 times 30, which we did earlier is 360. So the bottom... 1 plus 0 0.04 divided by 12 to the 360 minus 1. So when I entered the top, I got 2208 and 999 
And in the bottom, I got 2.3135. I would include as many decimals as possible so that your answer isn't significantly off when you submit it online. So I got 9.54 and 83 cents. So 9.54 and 83 cents. Okay, so that is part C. Part D, what's the total interest paid there? So even though, notice their monthly bill is about $100 cheaper. So you'd think they'd pay less, but they're paying it for five more years. So let's see here, 9 54 83 cents times 12 months times 30 years minus the amount they borrowed. And I got, sorry, I got that they would spend $143,738.80 in interest. So notice, even though the monthly payments are cheaper, they're going to pay a lot more in interest. So how much more interest? Well, you would take the two amounts and find the difference. So one forty three seven thirty eight eighty minus one sixteen six ninety five. And I see a total difference of $27,043. So they would pay way less in interest, right? That's $27,000 of interest. Part F, what is the difference between the monthly payments? So I'll write that right here, part F. Um, there, for the 25-year payment was $10.55. The 30-year payment was $9.54. And so if you subtract those, it was only a difference of $100.83. So it's worth it to pay a little bit more per month, be done with your loan five years earlier, and save almost $30,000. So get the shorter loan. Don't get the longer loan, even though you think, oh, it'll, you know, it's I less monthly payment. Overall, you'll spend more money. Number four, the assessed value of the Kreiner family's house is four fifty seven. dollars Annual property tax is $2.66 of the assessed value. So what will, what will their annual property tax be? So four fifty seven dollars times .266. I found that their total property tax, it's a lot, $12,156.20. So that's how much property tax they would owe per year for the home that they own. All right. Now the rest of this looks at how a bank determines whether you can afford a home. And there's two ratios we're going to go over. One is called a front end ratio. And I'm going to use F-E-R. And one is a back end ratio. And I'm going to put like bear or BER. So these are two different um, ratios that a bank evaluates, um, whether you're buying a car or buying a home, to look to see if you can afford it. So a front end ratio looks at your total, whoops, my bad, looks at your monthly housing expense divided by your monthly gross income. And the banks want this to be, so the banks want F-E-R to be 28% or less. So when we calculate this, the bank is going to approve if it's less than 28%. Basically, are your housing expenses less than 28% of your gross income? I don't remember if you, uh, we did a section on rent, looking at the proposed, like your rent shouldn't be more than 25 to 30% of your income. Banks expect that as well. Your back end ratio is very similar. The bottom amount is the same, your monthly gross income. The difference is that we're not just looking at your housing expenses, they want your total monthly expenses.
And so if a bank is using this ratio, the bank wants BER to be less than 36%. So notice the different front end is looking at your monthly housing expenses, back end is total monthly expenses. So we're gonna use that in number five. So Tom and Gwen have an adjusted gross in income of 144. Their monthly mortgage payment would be 1483. Their annual property taxes would be 9330. The homeowner's insurance, this is again having to do with their home, costs them 1099 per year. They have a monthly car payment and a credit card. Woo, look at their credit card. It's crazy. So let's first, it says let's do the front end. So I'm going to do that here, part A. So front end ratio. Now first I need to calculate some expenses, right? I need to figure out um, if my property taxes, my annual property taxes are 930 30, so I have to divide by 12 to know what my monthly is. So 93.30 divided by 12. Their monthly property taxes are 77.5. 7, so on the top here, oh, and well, I'll get there. Sorry. So these are property taxes. Now I need to figure out their um, homeowner's insurance is 10.99 per year. And it says again, it says per year, so I'm going to divide by 12. And 10.99 divided by 12 gave me 91.58. So their monthly living expenses for their house is their mortgage payment plus their um, property taxes plus their homeowner's insurance divided by their income. Now they gave us their income for the whole year. So what is 144 divided by 12? So a, a lot of these you're going to have to convert to monthly in order to determine. So they are making $12,009.33 a month. So I can now enter this. So I'm going to enter the top using parentheses. So 1483 plus 77.5 plus 91.58 divided by $12,009.33. And I get 0.196. So that is 19.6%. So based on that, would the bank um, allow them to lend the 220? And I put yes because less than the um, 28%, right? For a front end, the bank wants it to be less than 28, and we have 19.6%. So part B is your back end ratio. Now the bottom number is the same, but the top number is all their expenses. So the 1483, that's their mortgage, their monthly property taxes, their homeowner's insurance, their car, and their credit card. So you have to add all that up and then divide, and I got 57%. Now based on the fact that this is 57%, 57% is greater than what the bank wanted. This is greater than 36%. So no. So depending on what ratio the bank did would determine whether they felt this family could afford the loan. All right, number six, um, the market value of Jennifer and Neil's home is 319. The assessed value is 280. The annual property tax is 1970 per 1,000 of assessed value. All right, so let's do... 280 divided by 1,000 because they are charged per 1,000 of their assessed value. So I got 280. So I have 280 times 1970 and I got that their property taxes are 5516. 
So how much should they pay monthly towards their taxes? So if this is how much per year, divide by 12, and I got $459.67. All right, we're not going to do too many more. Um, I want to cover the balloon payment before we go. So this um, talks about a type of mortgage payment that you, mortgage plan you never want to go for. And it is called a um, interest only balloon payment. And you never want one of these, okay? Never sign up for anything that says balloon payment. Because it basically means for 25 years, you're only going to pay the interest. You're not going to pay anything towards what you borrowed. And then in the very last month, you're going to owe the bank 300 grand. That's insane. So let's go ahead and calculate this. Now in your book, interest only uh, payments would look like the following, your monthly payment times the amount you borrowed, and then just R divided by 12. It's a much simpler formula. It's the very first part. But this only applies to interest-only loans. So we're going to calculate that for here. So 300,000 times 0 .031 divided by 12. And I got that they'd only have a monthly payment of $775, which is why this type of plan is so attractive to people is because the monthly payment is so low. Part B, what's the total interest that you would pay over the loan? Well, it is a 25 year, so 25 years times 12 months in every year times your payment of 775. So if you enter, oh actually, sorry about that, hold on. You make interest payments all but the last payment. My apologies. So 25 times 12 is 300. For 299 months, you're going to pay 775. So notice it's one less because the last payment is your balloon payment. So 299 times 775, you're going to pay the bank $231,725. In just interest. This is interest only. You haven't even touched the amount that you borrowed. So what is the last payment? In one month, you're going to have to pay that original loan of $300,000. That's why they call it a balloon loan, because that last one is a huge um, payment. All right, we're going to skip eight. And that pretty much covers all the material in this section. Thank you.